Hi everyone, how are you doing? I felt like being fancy today. Um, so we all love a book list and the BBC have just published a really interesting list of 100 books which they are calling the novels that shaped our world and this is in celebration of 300 years of the English language novel. So they put together a group of panelists, of six panelists, of authors and journalists and people who work in the book world to create this list of 100 novels, which are sort of their personal favorite books, but also ones that they feel have really shaped our culture and our society over the past 300 years. And uh, and so I, I you first have to say off with this list, um, when they say the novels that shaped our world, um, they just mean the Western world, the English language speaking world. So when they say our, they don't mean everybody. Um, that obviously doesn't include the whole world, um, which, you know, is an important distinction to make. I mean, I think, you know, they, they do set out really clearly that this is just for sort of the English language speaking world, although obviously um, a lot of books have been translated and, and created a lot of dialogue with the rest of the world as well. Um, so, you know, I'd like to see a list that includes books from the, the whole world as well. Um, but, but in this case, we're just limiting it to the English language speaking world. And I think it's um, really exciting that they're, you know, they've it's this is going to be a sort of year long thing that they're um, launching where they're going to um, have lots of workshops with libraries and schools and different institutions, as well as having a three part BBC series talking about all of these books and creating as well as, you know, other books. I mean, uh, there's so in this three part series, they're going to be focusing on the issues of the British Empire, on women's voices and the working class experience and already in the summaries of these BBC series, um, they sort of mention other books as well that aren't on this list of 100 books. So obviously this is just, uh, this list is just kind of a springboard for, for talking about all the books in general um, that, that we love personally, but yeah, that we think have had a, a bigger impact on how we see the world and, and have sort of changed our culture in general. So I'll put links down below to everything that's happening uh, around this special initiative that they've created because um, it'll be really interesting to follow. I'll be excited to follow it over the course of the year, uh, but also a link to, to the list of the 100 books so you can see them. Uh, but in this video, I'll, I'll talk about the um, the list of this 100 books and I'll put 10 um, at a time up on the side and talk about the list in general, uh, which ones I've read and have really loved, um, which ones maybe, you know, I sort of question a bit and uh, and also ones that I'm really excited to read and interested to read because, yeah, I think it's a really interesting group of books. I mean, there are some ones that are sort of classic novels that are in, you know, the, the Western canon of literature that you would expect to see there. Um, there are other ones that are sort of more popular books and more recent books that haven't been included on lists like this before. Um, and then, yeah, there are books that I've not really come across and not heard of. Um, and then there are also ones that I've been meaning to read and felt like I should have read, but I haven't got around to reading yet. So yeah, I, I just, you know, I love how lists like this inspire us to help shape and change our reading and maybe try new things or really uh, become a cheerleader for certain books and really want to recommend them to other people. So I'll go through them now. Um, and it's interesting how they, they've they created this list through themed categories. So they've made 10 themed categories and novels which they feel have really spoken to the experience of this particular theme. So I went to an event uh, around the um, the pre-announcement back in August at the Edinburgh Book Festival and the judges were talking about it and how obviously a lot of these uh, books cross over into many different themes but they felt like uh, these sort of novels particularly exemplify certain aspects of these themes and help have sort of changed the um, the way we talk about these issues in our society. So first off um, in uh, grouping there is the issue of identity and uh, and there are 10 books about this and it starts off with Toni Morrison's novel Beloved um, which uh, absolutely I think is a beautiful beautiful novel though interestingly I read the novel Corregidora recently um, which was a novel that preceded Beloved and which was a novel that uh, Toni Morrison worked on as an editor at uh, Random House uh, but um, and you can really see that the 
that novel Corregidora must have influenced the novel Beloved so much. And, um, and Corregidora has just been reprinted uh, by Virago Press. And, uh, and so I think it's really great that people are going to be rediscovering this preceding novel as well as it, Toni Morrison's novel Beloved, um, which a lot of people know about and, and really love. And uh, Sebastian Barry's novel Days Without End is on there, which is, uh, I, I think it's really exciting this novel is on there. And of course, when this novel was published, I had some issues with the way it was presented and packaged. Uh, and I made a whole video about that, about how I was really angry about that. Um, but how I think this is an absolutely extraordinary novel, um, t talking about a uh, soldier's experience, an Irish soldier's experience, during uh, the uh, American Civil War and how this is a novel about a, a gay couple during that time, which is, I think it's really interesting when historical novels insert that experience uh, which um, wasn't written about at the time when it was occurring and, and hasn't really been written about since, but which obviously happened um, amongst some, some individuals. Um, but yeah, obviously that experience wasn't memorialized in our literature and in our history. And then there's Anne Michaels' uh, novel, Fugitive Pieces, which is a novel that has been on my shelf for ages and I've just never got around to reading it. So yeah, this is uh, one of those books on the list that's like, oh yeah, I should really get to reading that at, at some point. Um, there's also Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's novel, Half a Yellow Sun, which I, mean, I, I talked about in a video recently about how she's absolutely one of my favorite writers. I think she's so extraordinary and, and this novel especially which is about the history of the Biafran war in Nigeria um, is really extraordinary and uh, yeah so so happy to see this on the list. Um, there's Yag Yassi's novel Homegoing, um, another extraordinary uh, multi-generational family saga and this is a novel which I feel like it, it didn't really win I don't think it won any prizes at the time, but was hugely popular and is an incredible novel. So um, yeah, really happy to see this novel. And also this is one of, I think, the most beautiful book covers of the past 300 years as well. I mean, it's so gorgeous, isn't it? And it's so exciting that Yagyasi is publishing a new novel next year in 2020. So um, that'll be really exciting to see. Um, there's also Andrea Levy's novel Small Island, which is another novel that's been on my shelf for ages and I've just not got to, to reading. Um, and there's a new um, stage production of this at the National Theatre. And, uh, and so, yeah, I keep being reminded that, yes, I really need to get around to, to reading this book. Um, there's also uh, Chinua Achebe's novel Things, fall apart and I read this at university many years ago um, but haven't reread it since so yeah it makes me feel like I should go back and reread this novel because obviously with you know making a list like this you're talking you're sort of talking about classic books that really ought to be read and read again because obviously when rereading books you get so much more out of them and you know and the obviously some time has elapsed since you read it so you've changed as an individual and you'll probably see the novel in a different light and then finally on this group of books on identity is Zadie Smith's novel White Teeth which I think yeah absolutely changed the way um, we we talked about uh, identity politics in Britain um, when it was first published, um, but also the way that, that novels are written and the need for more inclusivity in um, publishing of authors that are not white. And, um, and yeah, and you can see how really there's been a conscious effort in publishing to be more inclusive of, of different voices. And I think Sadie Smith has continued to be a really important voice in our culture from the essays she's written, but also about the new novels and short stories that she's published. The next section is love, sex, and romance. And uh, and I should have said at the beginning that obviously I'm not going to be talking about every single one of these novels because otherwise this video would be hours and hours long. Um, but really talk about in the comments below if there's a novel on here that I didn't talk about, um, which you think is really extraordinary or one that you're especially interested in reading, um, let me know about that. Uh, so um, first off, there's Bridget Jones's Diaries, which I've never read. And I mean, I guess this has sort of helped shaped um, the way we, we 
talk about certain issues in society but yeah this is the first one on the list that i really sort of question like really is this one of the the most important novels of the past 300 years uh, I don't know. What do you think? Um, then there's Forever by Judy Bloom, uh, who's an author I've never read, but I know a lot of people have had a big, this author has had a big impact on them in their childhood. And so I think it's great that they they show um, some some children's books on this list as well as, you know, just adult novels. Because obviously in childhood, you know, that's where it shapes a lot of our identity, the, our influences, the things that we read, I think have a massive impact on us. Um, there's Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, um, which I think is an extraordinary, beautiful novel talking a lot about sexuality and race and class. Um, I, and yeah, James Baldwin, I think, is, is an author that could stand out as one of the most important authors of the past 300 years. I mean, it'd be interesting to make a, a separate list of the, the 100 most important authors of the past three centuries, because I think that would be a slightly different list. There, and there's certain authors where you can maybe not pick one novel in particular, which has had a big impact but them as an author have had such a big impact. So um, yeah, I think James Baldwin is one of those authors, even though a lot of his novels are really extraordinary and beautiful. I just read uh, If Feel Street Could Talk earlier this year and loved it. And uh, yeah, and I want to go back and read more of James Baldwin and reread him again. Uh, so then there's uh, also Zora Neale Hurston's novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. I have this beautiful Virago cover for the novel. And this is another one of those novels that I read in university. And I feel like I should go back and reread because I'm sure I'll get more out of it and find more in it this time. There's uh, Jane Austen on the list, which is an author I've never really got along with that well when I've tried to read her books before. But I haven't tried reading one of her books in a long time. So, you know, maybe... This is the time I should go back and try rereading her again. Um, there's Jilly Cooper, who's an author I've always just sort of dismissed. I thought her novels were sort of romance novels. Maybe that's a total misconception. Please let me know if I've got that wrong. But um, but yeah, I've um, I've yeah I've never read her. And it's great to see Elif Shafak uh, on this list. Um, the Forty Rules of Love is a novel I haven't read. I've only read a couple other of her her novels, but I really want to read more by her. Um, there's The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. And this is another author that I think that maybe there isn't a single book of hers that you can say stands as a novel that has really shaped our, our culture. But she as an author has been, I think, had such a big impact. And the way The, the Passion, I mean, I love the, the, the novel The Passion and, and the way it talks about sex and relationships. Um, I think has really like changed how we, we think about them. Uh, Patrick Hamilton is an, an author that I've always meant to read and get to, but, um, but yeah, that I've just never read. Uh, then the next category is adventure. And um, first off is the Kevin Barry novel, um, which I'm excited to see. I haven't, I haven't read this novel in particular, but I love his work and his writing. Um, uh, Ernest Hemingway is author author I've never read all that much by him and I loved his sort of memoir A Movable Feast it's a really fun book um, but yeah I feel like I, I I ought to read more Ernest Hemingway but I just never have and I've never read Philip Pullman's trilogy um, so yeah that's something I feel guilty about and know that I should have got to um, Raymond Chandler's novel The Big Sleep I read this as part of a book club that I was in a uh, long long time ago and I I never really thought I don't know I didn't I didn't think I would get along with Raymond Chandler but I love this novel it's so much fun as it was being clever and witty in the the subjects it talks about and I don't know if it's really shaped our culture I mean it sort of captures a particular moment and is in it's very stylistic how it's written um it's it's so much fun it's so good um but yeah I'll be interested to see how the panelists talk about this novel and how they think it's sort of impacted our our culture in general um then there's the Lord of the Rings trilogy which I think yeah you can't it's one of those sort of books I mean I guess or series of books that you can't deny that it's had a big impact on our culture. And the next theme category is life, death and other worlds and the first book on that is A Game of Thrones which is sort of funny that it naturally follows on um, from J.R.R. Tolkien because obviously it was massively influenced by that and I've never read the book. I watched the the TV series and hugely enjoyed it and always wanted to go back and read um, the novel but they're, they're so long um, that I'm just like oh are they really worth it? Um, I don't know but let me know if you think that they're really worth reading because um, uh, yeah I, I know I ought to get to them. 
Um, I've never read Dune by Frank Herbert, though I've had friends and partners in the past who loved this novel and thought it was so influential. And this is a novel that's been talked about on BookTube recently, and there's been a big group read for it. Um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Yes, absolutely. I and mean, I read this for the first time, I think just last year. And uh, yeah, I thought it was such an extraordinary novel, not what I was expecting at all. And I think is yeah, just such a brilliant novel. And it's funny to think about, um, you know, Jeanette Winterson, her most recent novel was massively influenced by Frankenstein and is a sort of play on that novel and Mary Shelley's life. And uh, yeah, and and, and uh, when, when I went to the Edinburgh Book Festival and was in the audience, they sort of asked amongst the audience what books they would pick for this list. And I sort of geekily raised my hand and said, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Because, um, yeah, it's, it's um, the, the way it, it looks at the lives of outsiders and um, captures that experience, how we can feel alienated from the whole human race at some times. The way that um, uh, Frankenstein creates that with his monster in the novel is, um, yeah, I think really extraordinary and uh, so good. Um, Marilyn Robinson, um, her novel Gilead. Um, this is a novel that I've, I've talked about before that I, I love Marilyn Robinson's writing and some of her books I think are so brilliant. But this is a novel which keeps appearing on these book prize. On not, it's, this isn't a book prize list. It's just a list of books that a group of people have come up with. And um, yeah, and this novel Gilead is, has appeared on multiple lists like this. And, and I just, I didn't really get along with this novel and didn't really understand it. So this is a novel that I know I really ought to reread because other people have, so many other people have said that it's it's really, really great. Uh, the Chronicles of Narnia was something that I read and loved as a child, but it's one of those things I wonder, like, if I reread it as an adult, would I really love it as much as I did as a child? I Or would it just have this nostalgic pull for me? I don't know. I, I sort of worry about books like that, you know? And Ursula K. Le Guin is a, is a writer that I've never read, but I feel like I, I should have read. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd really like to read her novels. Um, there's The Road by Cormac McCarthy, another novel which keeps appearing on these lists of books and um, and that, that I absolutely love too. And it's another book that's been talked about on BookTube a lot recently. So it's a dystopian novel that I'd definitely like to reread in the future. So we move on to Politics, Power and Protest. And uh, there's A Thousand Splendid Sons, um, which I've, I've never read. Uh, and uh, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I mean, I loved Aldous Huxley when I was at university. I read multiple novels of his and uh, yeah, and I loved Brave New World. Um, but yeah, this is another book that I feel like is due for a reread. Um, it's exciting to see Camilla Shamsi's novel Home Fire on, on this list, um, which I think is a really great novel and was much more entertaining than I expected it to be, as well as being really emotional and impactful and really complex and interesting in the issues that it talks about. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This is a novel that I reread a couple years ago and which, you know, really revived me to that experience that, like, yes, it's it's so important to reread novels because I thought it was so extraordinary. And yeah, it's so amazing the way he, he captures this microcosm of society through the eyes of children on an island and, and, and has had such a big impact on our whole culture, I think, as well as as the literary world uh, about how novels are written. I've not read uh, the, the novel Knots and Crosses, but it's a novel I've been wanting to get to. And I don't think I've ever heard of the novel Strumpet City by James Plunkett, but I love that name for a novel. So it makes me really curious and want to read this book now. Um, the Color Purple, yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's a brilliant novel, was so influential. Uh, the same for To Kill a Mockingbird by, by Harper Lee. I mean, such an extraordinary book and a novel that, you know, I read way back in school and is another book that I feel like I should reread. And I'm really happy to see V for Vendetta by Alan Moore on here, um, which is great graphic novel, which I absolutely loved, as well as his graphic novel From Hell. Um, I yeah, really want to read more by, by Alan Moore. And very, very happy to see Carol Shields' book, uh, Unless, on this, um, which is yeah, such extraordinary fiction. I, I love this book and, and love Carol Shields' fiction so much. It was so sad when, when she died. And, but yeah, I want to go back and read uh, more of her work. And there's Class and Society. Um, and first up with A House for Mr. Biswas by V.S. Naipaul. And Naipaul is a novel 
uh, sorry, writer, um, that I've uh, I've never read, but I sort of feel like uh, I don't know if I'm going to get along with his writing. And and I just sort of heard from things that he said personally, um, which I think are slightly dodgy and, and I might disagree with. So it's just sort of put me off from reading his books. But if you think this is a great novel or if there is any of his works that you'd really recommend, um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, Cannery Row by John Steinbeck. I'm so happy to see this novel on the list. I think it's an incredible novel. I read it several years ago for the first time and, and he's such a great writer and had such a big impact talking about the lives of people who are disenfranchised and, and, um, and sort of adrift um, in the world. Uh, Disgrace by J.M. Curtsy um, is a novel, another novel that keeps popping up on a lot of these lists and, and I think is, is a really great novel, um, but one that I read a long, long time ago. I mean, Charles Dickens is on there. It sort of feels like, of course, Charles Dickens is on there. It's sort of interesting that they pick Our Mutual Friends over any of his other books because I feel like other of his books have you know that are more popular and made a bigger impact um but i've actually never read our mutual friend um so i, I should get to reading that and I, I discovered recently several months ago that um the dickens charles dickens museum is very close to where i work so on my lunchtime i, I went along to the charles dickens museum um that was really fun to to see um poor cow by nell dunn i've never heard of this book um but another book that i'm so intrigued by the title of it i really want to find out more about it uh, there's The Prime of Just Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Spark, which is yeah, a great, extraordinary novel. And she is such an extraordinary novelist. I mean, definitely belongs on the list. And uh, Kazuo Ishiguro, I love his writing, but, um, but The Remains of the Day, even though it's one of his most popular novels and a Booker Prize winner, it's one that I haven't read yet. Um, so I, I really need to, to get to that. So happy to see Jean Reese on this list. And like I talked about when I made a video with Anna recently, um, I, this isn't my favorite novel by her, I and mean, I'd probably pick Good Morning Midnight over this, but I understand the importance of this in the way that it creates a sort of dialogue with, with literature and the Brontes. And, and, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think this is a good novel, but um, when I reread it recently, it's one that I feel like, oh, it's not as good as I remember it being. <laughs> um, so it's sort of interesting how there can be that experience rereading books too, where you go back and you're like, like, oh, I don't know if this is as good as I first thought it was. And the next section is to do with coming of age um, stories. And I think it's really interesting how on this group of 10 books, LitHub, the, the website LitHub, they published a book uh, list recently of the 50 greatest coming of age novels. And it's interesting that, um, that none of these 10 books appear on that lit hub list um, but other books in different sections of of this list appear on the lit hub list of 50 greatest coming of age novels so yeah that really shows i think how you know there's a lot of crossover between these different themes but but it's sort of interesting to to make these themes because it sort of shows of of narrows down narrows down what we find important about novels and uh, so yeah it's it's um Looking at this list, it's interesting, the uh, novel Golden Child uh, by Claire Adam is on it. It's a really recent novel and a debut novel. So it's, um, I mean, I thought this was a good novel, uh, it, but I, I wouldn't count it on the 300 or sorry, the 100 um, sort of most influential novels of the past 300 years. Um, I think that's quite a stretch to say, uh, but I don't know, maybe there's something in the book that I didn't really see. Um, there's Margaret Atwood's novel Oryx and Crake, and it's sort of interesting that um, they picked this Margaret Atwood novel. And when um, when I went to the Edinburgh Festival discussion about this um, this group of books, the 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 um, the panelists did say that they didn't want to repeat um, a same the same author on the list, so that they had to pick one novel by them, um, which is a pretty big challenge. And when with Margaret Atwood, I think you know that's. It's, it's interesting that they chose this over The Handmaid's Tale. But I think, again, Margaret Atwood is, an, is one of the writers that you could say, like, well, maybe she as a writer has had a huge impact on the culture and society, but maybe not any one novel in particular. And uh, so, yeah, I, uh, it's really interesting that they, they picked um, this book. Uh, so Long and See You Tomorrow by Mil William Maxwell is a novel that I read and remember really enjoying, but it's one that I don't really remember much from um, and read many, many years ago. So yeah, it's one of those books that I feel like I need to reread just to remember what it's even about. 
Um, there's The Country Girls by Edna O'Brien, which is a novel I've never read, but I've read a couple other books by her, which I thought were extraordinary and wonderful. And um, I know this is one of her classic novels that I really should have read. Um, and it's interesting that she recently published a new novel just called Girl. And um, so, yeah, I I'd, I'd really want to read more by her. There's the Harry Potter um, series on this, which I think you, you can't deny has had such a huge impact. I mean, maybe not for me, Personally, I'm just maybe a bit too old. It, it didn't. If if these books had come out when I was a bit younger, I think they undeniably would have had a massive impact on me. But just me as an adult um, coming to them, it hasn't had such a big impact. But you know, you can I think not include um, this group of books on this list. But then you get to the Twilight Saga by Stephanie Meyer, and you know, I mean, it's they've been massively popular and had a big impact as well. But I would sort of question whether they belong on this list as much. I don't know. What do you think? Then there is the theme of friendship and family, and uh, Vikram Seth's novel, A Suitable Boy, uh, his big massive novel, um, which I've never read, and uh, another book which has been on my shelf for ages and just not got around to, um, unfortunately. Tim Winton, I've not read his novel Cloud Street on this list, but I've read two other novels by him, which I thought were so beautiful and extraordinary. So I um, definitely want to read this book and sort of, yeah, the, a list like this remind me that, oh yeah, there's books by these authors that I really ought to get to reading um, because I've read their books before and um, just yet, yeah, but not got to these particular books. So yeah, definitely want to read that. I've never read um, Cold Comfort Farm or I Capture the Castle. I feel like I really should have done. And uh, yeah, so happy to see Middlemarch by George Eliot because uh, yeah, I love this novel so much. Um, uh, and great to see Armistead Muffin's um, Tales of the City um, group of books on this list. And yeah, I would sort of agree that, yeah, I think this they, they probably belong on a list like this as well, because really, you know, created uh, dialogue with our society. I just went to hear him speak recently. Um, he was in conversation at the South Bank Center with Neil Gaiman, actually. The, the impact his novels had, I think, you know, was was really big. Um, at the time and continues to be. I mean, there's a, a whole new series um, continuing on with this saga. Um, the Shipping News by E.N.E. E. Pru. I mean, I re remember really enjoying this novel, but I don't know if I would put it on a list like this. I mean, I think maybe she's another writer that, you know, she as a writer belongs on the list, but maybe not um, this novel in particular. Um, the Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I have to be really guilty. I was I wanted to read this for Victober and I just didn't get around to it. So um, yeah, I still want to get to this novel. I love this cover. And then there's The Witches by Roald Dahl. Um, it's, I've never read this novel by him, but yeah, I think he's a, another writer that has had such a big impact on our culture. But um, but I don't know, can you pick any particular novel of his? And, and, uh, and I don't know, does this one, do you think this one really stands out um, as sort of exemplary amongst all of his work. It's the next theme of conflict and crime and top of that list is American Tabloid by James Elroy. I was supposed to read this novel for a book club and I started reading it and I just really didn't get along with it. It just, um, I think, I think this is a, this is a writer in that just personally for me, um, he just doesn't do it for me. I, I can't read his books, but um, other, other friends of that I know um, absolutely love his books and really rate him as as a writer and I can see how he's had an impact on um, our society and culture but but for me personally I just mm, d just doesn't do it for me um it's really interesting that this novel American War is on this list because I remember this when this first came out um there was a lot of hype around it but then a lot of people were really didn't get on with this this novel I've I've personally not read it um and and because it had such mixed reviews it sort of put me off reading it but I don't know what do you think should I read this novel and I'll be really interested hearing from the panelists that made this list why they think this this um this novel really stands out and I've never read uh, Daphne du Maurier's uh, classic novel Rebecca I have this beautiful Virago edition Virago Virago published such beautiful editions of the novel and this is an 80th anniversary edition and it's difficult to show on camera because um it's all white but but there's um sort of uh uh what do you call that? I don't know. The, the cover is sort of raised up in, in places and so it makes it texturally satisfying to uh, to stroke as well as as uh, as as the beautiful uh, edition in itself. 
Um, so yeah, I know I need to get to reading this book. There's Pat Barker's Regeneration uh, books, um, which yeah, I um, yeah, I think they're really great novels. Um, I've not read P.D. James' novel, The Children of Men. It's an extraordinary film. I, I loved the film. Um, but yeah, I really need to go and read the, the, uh, the actual novel. Um, there's Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, The Hound of Baskervilles. And I, I was one of those kids. I, I never read uh, Sherlock Holmes mysteries um, when I was younger. I feel like I really missed out. I should have. That should have been the time when I, I read them. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting now to try reading him as an adult. Mohsen Hamid is a really, uh, really uh, polarizing author. Some people really love him and some people really don't. So yeah, it's sort of interesting that um, he's included on this list. And uh, Talented Mr. Ripley is another novel that I loved the film, but I've never read the actual novel itself, which I know is really neglectful of me. Um, I should have. And, and uh, I'd like to go on a Patricia Highsmith reading kick at, at some point. And uh, Graham Greene is another author that I just sort of personally never really got, got along with his writing, um, just just me, myself, um, and my reading tastes. And then the final themed section is Rule Breakers. And uh, there's Con Confederacy of Dunces um, on this list, which is such a fun novel and really interesting novel. I mean, he's, yeah, such an interesting outsider voice. I, d I don't know if I would include this novel on this list, but yeah, it's interesting. I'm so happy to see Bartleby the Scrivener on this list. It's so extraordinary. Actually, I should have read, I have a t-shirt um, that says, I would prefer not to. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think just, yeah, this, um, it's, yeah, it's interesting that they chose this over Moby Dick, but, um, but at the same time, yeah, I think what he says in this novel and does in this, this novel, sort of a voice of the working class man, um, is really great. Um, I've never heard of the novel Habibi um, by Craig Thompson. So yeah, I'd be interested to look into to this novel. It's another novel I need to find out more about. I'm so happy to see How to Be Both by Ali Smith on this list. Love this book so much and um, so innovative and fun. I, I just think her, her writing is so much fun as well as being incredibly clever and witty and um, yeah, and saying something important about our culture today. Also so happy to see Orlando by Virginia Woolf on this list. Um, I have this beautiful vintage edition of the, the novel and this is a book that I reread uh, just last year I think um, and yeah and I found so extraordinary again I mean I read it first read it at university and um, and rereading it was so fruitful and really um, just uh, so wonderful. I'm just such a wonderful experience. It's so playful as, and fun, you know, like Ali Smith, as well as being incredibly intelligent, um, so smart, um, what she talks about. And her sentences are so complex and odd. They're, they're really odd. I think there's just so much to unpack from them that um, Virginia Woolf is always worth rereading. I'm also so, so, so happy to see Knights of the Circus by Angela Carter on this list. Um, Angela Carter, um, her, she, she just received a blue pack recently on a, um, um, a, at the house she used to live in in uh, in Clapham in London, and um, and there are these sort of heritage blue plaques um, which are put up on on uh, properties which are considered to have historic importance, and and she just received a blue plaque recently. So I was so happy to see that because yeah, she's a writer which has had such a big impact on our culture, and I think wasn't I mean she was revered at the time when she was still alive, but I think not as revered as as she should have been um, because. Yeah, she's, um, and this, this novel also is so much fun to read, as well as being really clever and so imaginative in, in how she handles it. I mean, it's about a woman who was hatched from an egg and, um, and so is just sort of, um, you know, doesn't have that tie to a mother in the way that uh, ordinary humans are and, um, and who becomes a circus performer. And, and it's just, oh, it's, it's so wonderful. Um, I love this book so much and, and yeah, I hope, this will um, bring her back to, to public attention and get people reading her books again. There's 1984 by George Orwell. And do we even need to talk about um, the impact that this novel has? I don't think we have. I mean, just in the, the dialogue we have, the words, the language we use to, to describe certain uh, changes in society and aspects of totalitarian society, you know, it's it's had such a big impact. So, um, so yeah, so... So great to see this on the list as well. I've never read P.G. Woodhouse, but I'd be really curious to read. I feel like this is sort of an old fashioned author that people don't read as much anymore. So uh, it'd be interesting to try him. Um, Salman Rushdie, um, as with his most recent novel, um, this is, I think, another writer that I just personally don't 
connect with his writing in the way that other people have. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, my feelings about that. Um, I've never read Zami by Audre Lorde, but always meant to. Um, so yeah, this reminded me that I really need to. Um, so those are the, the books on, on uh, this. But yeah, obviously, I haven't talked about all of these hundred books. Um, so let me know in the comments if you think any of these books um, are really worthy, if you agree with the choices, if you disagree with the choices, or if you think there are other books that should be on the list. I mean, it's interesting talking about women's voices that um, that Doris Lessing's The Golden Notebook wasn't included. I, I found that really surprising. I mean, yeah, this, um, the, this is such an imaginative novel in the, the way it's structured, but also in the, the message of it. Although I think um, it's, slightly homophobic in certain sections, um, which is an interesting issue, um, which should be noted when reading and talking about it, but, um, but obviously doesn't disqualify it and doesn't mean that we should stop reading it. Um, also, I, I sort of wish I, you know, have to cheer for Joyce Carol Oates. I, I would put We Were the Mulvaney's on a list like this because, you know, again, talking about women's voices, the way it talks about the um, survivor of a sexual attack of, of rape um, and how an individual can continue to go on and, you know, really have a fruitful and and great life um, after an attack like this, even if they're rejected by their family, you know, that doesn't mean the end of, of their life. They can continue to go on. And, um, and Joyce Carol Oates in this novel shows how an individual like that can have multiple options and multiple different paths, which would still mean that they, they would go on and still have a, a really great life. So, um, so yeah, those are, those are a couple other choices I would probably add on to a list like this. But, but let me know if there are books that, that you would want to add on to this list and and uh, yeah so um so yeah it's just a way of sort of sparking discussion and talking about books and you know I think which is the most fun thing about lists like this is it just gets people talking about books and and, and I'm really glad that the BBC are doing this as a way of engaging the public and getting them talking about literature and novels in particular so uh, so thank you for for watching let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll speak to you again again, er, again, again, soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone.